Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Mildred Espinosa, Head of Media Relations for South South News. Um, Your Excellency, thank you this afternoon for giving us the opportunity for inviting us to participate in this initiative. Um, we wish to thank the uh, delegations as well as the distinguished guests. I am here to speak on behalf of the Ambassador Francis Lorenzo, uh, who unfortunately could not join us for some uh, conflict with his agenda. However, I am honored to be here and speak on his be behalf in delivering his remarks. With that said, uh, South South News wishes to commend you on championing this effort on your initiative on water. We thank you for taking the time in organizing this meeting and for recognizing the importance of water for life. It is our mandate to support any initiative related to water because we recognize and understand the importance of water when we talk about achieving the Millennium Development Goals. Our goal is to promote positive news about all the developing countries and their progress in working towards achieving the Millennium Development Goals. In light of our commitment to this initiative on water, in June, we supported the high-level ministerial meeting in Dushanbe, Tajikistan because we understand the importance of bringing more awareness at the global level. We know the, the critical role the media plays in raising awareness about issues related to the Millennium Development Goals, such as water-related goals. And we all agree that the MDGs cannot be achieved alone by one government, the UN, or any single organization. We all have a role to play in improving the lives of people around the world. More importantly, South South News understands the importance of participation of three of the main stakeholders, the government, the private sector, and the civil society, to fulfill our mission, and that is the facilitating, connecting, and publishing news on various of efforts in sustainable economic and social development to audiences and multiple constituencies, not only in the South, but around the world. I would like to now thank you, thank you, Your Excellency, delegations, and uh, presenters who are here. Thank you. The last item on our agenda is a book presentation. This uh, book has, has been uh, prepared and published by Mr. William E. Marks, and it's entitled Water Voices from Around the World dedicated to the International Decade of Action, Water for Life 2005-2015. And uh, with this, I would like to, uh, to invite the, uh, the publisher to present the book. I'm afraid you're gonna have to come here. Water <laughs> for Life. Oh. Distinguished first, Prime Minister of the Republic of Tajikistan, distinguished Under Secretary General, Excellencies and Ladies and Gentlemen, I would like to extend my appreciation to the organizers of this water event for the invitation to participate today. It is my honor and privilege to address the distinguished delegates of the United Nations Member States and to present to you the book entitled Water Voices from around the world. Each of you can feel free to pick up a copy of the brochure relative to this book. And as you will read, this book is dedicated to the International Decade of Action, Water for Life, 2005 to 2015, which was initiated by the Republic of Tajikistan. I extend my deepest appreciation to the President of the Republic of Tajikistan, H.E. Mr. Amamali Rakhmon for his contribution to this water book and including his letter addressed to people of the world. I'm proud to inform you that this book, Water Voices from Around the World, won first place gold at the world's largest international independent book competition as the book most likely to save the planet. This was first place as the book most likely to save the planet out of thousands of books submitted from around the world. Also at this time, I'd like to remember two of the book's authors who have passed in recent years. 
the former Prime Minister of Japan, H.E. Mr. Royotaro Hashimoto, whom I had the honor of meeting at the Fourth World Forum in Mexico City, and Chief Jake Swamp, Chief of the Mohawk Nation Council of Chiefs, and the founder of the International Tree of Peace Society. I had the honor of meeting Chief Jake Swamp at the International Sacred Wheel of Water Gathering in Santa Barbara seven years ago. The photographs you see being projected are from the book, Water Voices from Around the World. And this book was made possible by a collaboration of the permanent mission of the Republic of Tajikistan to the UN, myself as editor and publisher, and 77 internationally renowned water authors. The biographies of each of these authors and their contact information can be found in the Water Voices book. The authors in Water Voices represent 48 countries, five regional UNGA groups, six continents, with the seventh continent of Antarctica being represented by the silent voices of the species that reside in that region. Water Voices is composed of over 100 articles and 77 letters addressed to the people of the world. These letters are from profound water people, some of whom are recipients of the Nobel Peace Prize, the Stockholm Water Prize, and the Heinz Award. Water Voices contains over 400 color photographs from hundreds of photographers from around the world, making this a visual journey into the mystical world of water as we explore realms of science, philosophy, politics, history, art, economics, religion, society, and culture. In one fashion or another, water touches every facet of our daily lives. The letters in this book represent an awakening water consciousness, with many of the letters providing a foundation for short and long-term goals as we attempt as a civilization to shift to a new paradigm in our relationship with water. <coughs> if we wish to survive and thrive as a civilization, it will be wise for us to heed the information presented by the profound authors in this book. None of the current urgent water-related <coughs> issues escapes the attention of the authors in Water Voices. They address water shortages, climate change, water-related disasters, expanding deserts, global underground depletion, unsustainable water use, melting ice caps and shrinking glaciers, food shortages, expanding dead zones in our world's oceans, environmental refugees, and irreparable ecosystem damage in our oceans, reefs, rivers, and wetlands. Because of its far-reaching content, I feel confident that our Water Voices book has made, and continues to make, a worthy contribution to addressing our current and future global water challenges. The ideas and recommendations expressed by the authors in Water Voices may be regarded as valuable by parties involved in negotiating and making decisions on water issues at the regional, national, and international levels. The authors in this book share specific views on water problems giving us the benefit of their professional experience and the experience of their countries and people. I am confident that this diversity of approaches, opinions, 
and experiences may be used to the advantage of all stakeholders involved in addressing various water issues. The fundamental idea, we heard this repeated here today by the panelists, that permeates the statements made in this book, is that water is the source of life and how all politicians and stakeholders should be guided by this principle, including those relating to resolution of water-related intergovernmental problems and challenges. Since this is the first water book of its kind, and due to the relative time and space constraints I faced as the book's publisher, we could not include all of the United Nations member states. However, due to the success of this first edition, we intend to publish future editions of Water Voices. On that note, we would be honored if the heads of state government of your countries, as well as water experts, celebrities, and others, will respond to our open invitation an invitation to share your thoughts and experiences in this fashion through your letters addressed to the people of the world we will be in a position to publish future editions of water voices i sincerely hope that this book and its future editions will assist in bringing together cooperation amongst all water users for achieving sustainable development, for meeting any challenges which impact water resources and water supply, for all people and all ecosystems, for the production of food and energy, and to achieve as best possible the internationally agreed development goals. At this time, I wish to express my deep appreciation and gratitude to H.E. Ambassador Sorajidin as love, permanent representative of the Republic of Tajikistan to the United Nations, H.E. Ambassador Rashid Alimov, the former permanent representative of the Republic of Tajikistan to the U.N., and Ludmila Lapshina, advisor of the permanent mission of the Republic of Tajikistan to the UN, who acted as the production coordinator for this book. And it is also my pleasure to inform you that by the end of this year, which marks the midpoint of the United Nations International Decade of War, that copies of Water Voices from around the world will be distributed to every leader of the world through their permanent missions to the United Nations. In closing, I would like to share a brief water poem that was published by National Geographic Books in their book called Written in Water, messages of hope for Earth's most precious resource. It's a very simple poem, but it has many dimensions. And that is, water is the ink that writes the poetry of life. And in closing, I will play my Native American flute. My teacher was R. Carlos Nakai, the world's foremost Native American flute player. And as the representative from Peru knows, and many other people, oftentimes flute music and drum music accompanies the rhythms of water. And as you listen to this original composition called the River Song, uh, you may hear animal sounds, you may hear bird calls. It reflects what water creates as well as the moods of water. So I recommend that everybody sit up straight in their chairs.
Take a deep breath. You don't have to stand up, just sit up straight. I want you to be in a meditative frame of mind here. Another deep breath. One more. faster than it does through air, which is why our heart beats four times for each breath we take.